Well, it's summertime and it's hot everywhere. Today, we're going to talk about the importance of sun health and how to care for your skin. Well, welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. DuPont. I'm a board certified gynecologic oncologist and I'm passionate about educating women on how to improve their lives. And I believe that begins with great health. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're coming back, please click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And also click the like button to let me know that this video is helpful for you. Well, when we think about sun protection, the main purpose of caring for our skin is to prevent skin cancer, to prevent sunburns, and also to prevent premature aging. When we think about skin cancer, skin cancer is the most common cancer in Americans. One in five Americans will develop skin cancer by the age of 70. That is a lot of people. And most skin cancers will start in the epidermis or the outer layer of the skin. The epidermis has three parts. It will have the basal layer, the squamous layer, and the layer with the melanocytes. Basal cell cancer is common and they're actually the most common. You may have a grandparent or someone in your family that had like a spot on their cheek or their nose. Those are some of the most common locations for basal cell cancers. Very rarely spread and usually they're local and and most people will notice kind of a, a new lesion on their face that they'll see the dermatologist about. Atenic keratosis is one of the most common precancers of skin cancer, and it affects more than 58 million Americans. So these cancers are very common and they do affect a lot of people. Having five or more sunburns increases your risk for melanoma. And those are cancers that start in the melanocytes on that epidermal or outer layer of the skin. The risk of skin cancer from sunburns is actually similar to the risk of skin cancer from tanning beds. So if you use tanning beds or have someone in your family use tanning beds, please tell them to stop because it does increase your risk for cancer. Now patients will tell me, you know, I don't go outside so I don't wear sunscreen. Well, you do need to protect your skin at all times in the winter, while driving, while indoors, especially if you're near an open window or a glass window, and even on cloudy days. On cloudy days, 80% of the sun's harmful UV rays can penetrate through the clouds. So you really do need to wear sunscreen year round. And studies have shown that 25% of all of our sun damage happens during childhood. So it's really important to protect your children as well as yourself. Now I have had patients tell me, oh, well, I know that vitamin D is made from your skin when it's exposed to sun, so I don't like to wear sunscreen because my vitamin D levels are low. Well, the American Academy of Dermatology recommends getting adequate vitamin D through food sources and not relying on that conversion of vitamin D through your skin. And so that's something that's really important. There are a lot of foods that have vitamin D, such as fatty fish, um, like wild caught salmon, sardines, tuna, mackerel, egg yolks, some mushrooms will have vitamin D, milk and dairy products often will have good sources of vitamin D. And there are also foods that are sort of, that are fortified with vitamin D, such as cereals or even orange juice. You may see the label, they'll have fortified with vitamin D. Vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin that's stored in the body's fatty tissues. Your body can make um, some vitamin D on its own when it's exposed to UVB rays. But again, remember the American Academy of Dermatology doesn't want you to rely on getting the vitamin D only from the sun. We do want you to make sure you have appropriate vitamin D in your food sources. So what are the ways that you can protect your skin? Well, one of the easiest ways is shade. If you're outside and you're at an event and you can't really leave, you have to be outside, try to sh seek shade or shelter. We do know that the, the sunlight's harm, the rays of the sun are strongest between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So if possible, try to you know schedule events either early in the morning or late in the afternoon when the sun's rays aren't as strong. There's also clothing. You can wear sun protective clothing, such as there'll be some clothes that have a UPF factor, which is ultraviolet protection factor. What that does is that some clothes you can purchase will have that factor and it protects you from the sun in addition to just having long sleeve clothing. A shirt with a UPF of 50 allows 150 of the sun's rays to reach the skin. I'm a runner and I've been a runner for many years. And so when I run, I typically try to run in the morning, but I do um, have this shirt that I'd love. I got it from Coolabar that has UPF 50 on it. And so there are clothes you can purchase. There's hats you can purchase that will have that UPF factor on. In terms of just general clothing, you want to wear lightweight clothing with long sleeve shirts if possible. You want to wear pants if possible to protect your skin from the sun. Avoid clothing with loose or open weaves like lace because that light can go straight through that those open weaves. 
want to wear dark colors, they provide more UV protection than lighter colors. And then there's UPF hats also will have protection. When you're wearing hats, you want a wide brim hat. You want to avoid straw hats and avoid baseball caps. And also you want to protect your eyes. That's very important. You want UV protective sunglasses. In terms of sunscreen, you're thinking about what type of sunscreen to use. You want something that's broad spectrum that covers UVA and UVB rays. And you want an SPF of 30 or more. Now, an FPF 30 means that 97% of the sun's UVB rays are blocked. No sunscreen can block 100% of all the sun's rays. When you're applying sunscreen, you want to apply it on clean, dry skin. It'll take about 15 minutes to absorb. So, you know, put it before you go outside. If you can, put it on before you're outside. And apply it on all the areas of the skin that aren't covered by clothing. So anything that's bare, such as your neck, your ears, face, your scalp. If you have thinning hair or if you're bald, you definitely need to protect the skin on your scalp. And then also like your feet, if you're going to be wearing sandals or flip-flops outside, make sure you cover the tops of your feet. That's very important. Also, you should use a lip balm with SPF 30 or more. You know, when I was doing research for this video, I realized I didn't have any SPF. So I went to Walmart and got this one. It's from Carmex. I did see two different brands, but it has SPF 30 and it's a weather guard. And so you want to protect your lips as well. So when we think about sunlight, sunlight has two components, the UVA rays and the UVB rays. When we're thinking about UVA, we think of aging. UVB, we think of burns. So UVA rays will penetrate the skin much deeper and can cause things like premature aging, wrinkles, fine lines on your face. UVB rays can cause sunburn. Now, one thing about UVA rays is they can also pass through window glass. So if you're driving, you still need sunscreen because the sun can go through the windows and still will harm your skin. So when you're thinking about what type of sunscreen, you want something that's water resistant. So I have used this brand for many years and it'll say water resistant to 80 minutes. So you want something at least 40 minutes. And what that means is that if you're in water, that sunscreen will last for at least 40 minutes. You do need to reapply sunscreen every two hours and definitely reapply after swimming, after towel drying, after sweating. And then if you're doing water sports, you definitely want to reapply about every 30 minutes. I did create a video for sun health for athletes. And so definitely check that video out where I'll go more in depth about sunburns and what to do to protect your skin if you're an athlete. Now you also wanna make sure you apply enough sunscreen. So it's been said, you know, you should apply a shot glass full of sunscreen. Also, you know, some say a golf ball size. So you want to make sure not only are you using sunscreen, but you're using enough sunscreen. So in terms of the types of sunscreen, what works for your body. So like I'll use a different sunscreen for my face than for my body. So this is the one I use for my body. I use different ones for my face because sometimes I've noticed like when you sweat, sometimes the sunscreen will get in your eye and will burn. So you want to find sunscreen that fits kind of your lifestyle and one that you're going to use often. Creams, gels, sticks, or spray. So whatever form of sunscreen, just make sure it's something that you use on a daily basis. There are also tinted sunscreens and those add extra protection for visible light. And so some people like those because they can wear those instead of wearing makeup. Now the American Academy of Dermatology does advise that you don't wear a sunscreen that has an insect repellent in it. Use two separate products. So what you'll do is you'll put your sunscreen on first, let that dry down and then use your insect repellent. So you don't want to use a sunscreen with a combination of those. And then I've had patients over the years say, oh, well, I have SPF in my makeup. Up. That's how I get it on my face. Well, that's not enough. So think about the amount of sunscreen you need to use. So for your face, typically you'll use kind of two fingers. So you'll put the sunscreen from kind of the crease of your palm to your fingertip on your middle finger and your index finger. And that's how much you should put on your face. Well, you're not going to ever put that much makeup on. So, or at least I hope you don't. <laughs> so when you're thinking about the sunscreen in your makeup, you do actually have to have enough makeup to be able to get that SPF protection. And most makeup, if it does have have sunscreen it'll typically only have SPF 15 so that's really not high enough especially if you want to combat premature aging so typically what I'll do is I'll do my skincare routine I'll then put my moisturizer let that dry down then I'll come back and use the most of sunscreen I'm going to use with my face let that dry down and then I will put my primer because I have oily acne prone skin. And then after my primer, I'll put my, my makeup on so or my foundation. So just make sure that you allow the sunscreen to dry after you're applying before you apply your makeup or your foundation or your primer, whichever you use in the next step before uh, while you're getting ready in the morning. 
Well, there's different types of sunscreen. So there's a chemical sunscreen, there's a physical sunscreen that's also called mineral, and then there's a hybrid that's a combination of them both. So this sunscreen is a chemical sunscreen, and they're very different. It doesn't really matter which one you use, just use which one that's best for you. But I'll talk a little bit about you know, how they differ. So chemical sunscreen has less white cast. So I've noticed over the years that some sunscreens I'll put on will make me look chalky because my skin tone is deeper. So the uh, physical sunscreens will give me like a white chalky look or appearance. And so it never looks attractive. So I usually will use a chemical sunscreen. Those filters are a little bit different. They absorb in the sun, they absorb through the skin better. And so you don't usually have that white cast. And usually a chemical sunscreen is thinner than a physical or mineral sunscreen, so it absorbs a little bit easier. Well, some of the benefits of the physical sunscreen is that it provides kind of a barrier between the sun and your skin. So it's, I think of it as more of a shield. And usually sunscreen will have titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. So those are some of the words that'll be in the label so that you know this is a physical or mineral sunscreen. It can leave a white cast, so if you're deeper skin, you may not like that sunscreen as much. It is good for sensitive skin. So if you have skin that's real irritated easily, the physical sunscreen might be better for you because you just may know, notice you have less irritation. In terms of children, small infants, six months and older, and toddlers should only use a physical sunscreen. You should not use a chemical sunscreen on the small children. And then a hybrid sunscreen, again, will have combinations of them both. So some of my favorite facial sunscreens, again, I typically use the uh, chemical sunscreens because they work better on my deeper skin tone. I um, love Supergoop. They have this unseen sunscreen. It's an SPF 40. I usually get it on their website, supergoop.com, or I'll get it at Sephora. And I've noticed that I get the matte one. There's one I think that has a glow glow in it, but I usually use the matte one because again, my skin is oily, acne prone. So it kind of mattifies and actually acts like a primer. I still use an additional primer so that my makeup lasts all day, but I do like the Unseen Sunscreen by Supergoop. Another one I use, I've used for a long time and I don't have any with me today, but the Biore UV Aqua Rich SPF 50. That's one of the Asian sunscreens. They have different chemical filters and so their bottles will have like a PA++, plus plus plus. I think the four pluses are the maximum. Well, their filters are a little bit different, so their terminology on the, the labels will be different, but they make excellent sunscreens. So the Bure one, I usually get on YesStyle.com. It's a website where you can get a lot of the Asian, Korean, Japanese skincare products for really good prices, so YesStyle.com. Another one I've used for many years is the Ambi Even and Clear Facial Moisturizer with SPF 30. I use that when, um, when I'm using like a moisturizer combination. So like let's say I'm at the gym and I worked out, I will use that because it has a moisturizer and a sunscreen together. And I've used it for many years and it works great for my skin. There are many different types of sunscreens. If there's one that you enjoy, put it in the comments below to share it with others. Well, in terms of things to avoid, one thing is for very young babies, you don't want to put sunscreen on them if at all possible. If you must, then definitely use a physical or mineral sunscreen geared for babies. And usually once they're indoors, you need to wash off the sunscreen. So with babies, you want to put hats or keep them under umbrellas, but try not to expose them for sun too long. They can get overheated and you don't want the sun to damage your skin because remember 25% of all sun damage occurs during childhood. The FDA does require that sunscreens retain their original strength for three years. So if you have a bottle of sunscreen that's been in your house for like a year, just throw it out and get a new one. And when you're purchasing sunscreen, make sure you check the expiration date. On this bottle, it's kind of in the cap and it really is hard to find, but typically it'll be somewhere on the bottle. So I just bought this one last week and it expires in 2026. So make sure your uh, sunscreen has not expired when you're purchasing it. If you have a bottle at home that's been sitting around, toss it because most likely it's not as effective, especially if it's been open for a while. And then also for sunscreens, don't expose them to extreme heat. Don't leave them in your car. Don't leave them on a you know your dash in your car because you don't want to you know damage the the product itself and then also avoid artificial sources of radiation so we get uv radiation from the sun but you can also get it from artificial sources such as tanning beds and sun lamps so if at all possible avoid sun lamps avoid tanning beds there's a lot of new safer self tanning products that look great these days they don't have that orangey color like they used to when they first came out they're very popular and they're safer than using a tanning bed or a sun lamp in terms of skin cancer screening, there are some risk factors. So the American Cancer Society 
states that patients who have high risk factors for skin cancer are those with red hair or blonde hair, fair skinned, light colored eyes such as blue eyes, fair skin that burns or freckles easier, family history of skin cancer. So, you know, if your mom or dad or grandma had melanoma or basal cell, you'll be, you know, higher risk for that. So something to think about personal history of skin cancer. So if you've had it before, you're someone that needs to see your dermatologist more often. If you have any suspicious moles, maybe that are changing in size, or you've had bad sunburns. Remember, having five or more sunburns puts you at increased risk for skin cancer. So if you're someone in childhood had sunburns all the time, definitely start seeing your dermatologist sooner rather than later. And then the American Cancer Society states that if you have 50 or more moles, you are higher risk for skin cancer and should see dermatologists. And in terms of skin exams by the dermatologist, they state ages 20 to 40, you should see a dermatologist every three years for a skin exam. And if you're over 40, you should see a dermatologist every year for skin exams. And that's according to the American Cancer Society. When we talk about moles, I want you to know what to look for. Now, when I was in training, we used to have the ABCDs of mole. Now they're the ABCDEs of moles. <laughs> and I'll put them in the description for you and try to put some links where you can look at different moles to see if there's something that you have that's concerning that you need to see a dermatologist about. But moles that are larger than six millimeters or the size of a pencil eraser are moles that are concerning. Moles that are asymmetrical, so you know it has a funny shape. Moles that have blurry or jagged edges. Moles that have multiple colors inside, those are concerning. And then moles that are changing in size or shape or texture, those are moles that need to be seen and likely removed by a dermatologist. Now the ABCD E <laughs> to detect skin cancer, the A is for asymmetry, B is for borders, C is for colors, D is for diameter, and E is for evolving. So again, the ABCDEs, and I'll put a link in the description below so that you can see some charts on what to look for, in, you know, in terms of, you know, should your mole be removed or not. I also put some, more, uh, some good sources of information for skin cancer. I got a lot of information from for this video from the American Academy of Dermatology. I have a lot of great patient videos in terms of sun health, how to choose a sunscreen, you know, how to examine your skin for suspicious moles. The American Cancer Society has a lot of great information and I'll link their website below. And also the Skin Cancer Foundation has some great information that I think will be very helpful for you. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you have some tips that you want to share with others, please put them in the comments below. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button to be able to get great content every week. And thank you for watching to the very, very end. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.